after browsing around on the internet for quite some time, I managed to find, I think, one of the best budget solar inverters rated up to 2000 watts with a pure sine wave. It is called the DN-03, that is from a company called Dato Boss. It is a pure sine wave inverter rated up to 2000 watts. So the unit that we will be looking at today is the 12 volt version. I believe that this sort of series that they actually have from Dato Boss. They have inverters that go up to 60 volts, I believe. So you really got to pick the right inverter for your battery and your needs. Simply put, for example, if you take a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery and you're looking to have an inverter, you've got to try and find an inverter which is 12 volts. If you have a 24 volt battery, you'll be looking for the 24 volt inverter, etc. There's two very important things I want to disclose before we go through and, and have a look at the various different features and showcasing what this inverter can actually do. And I'm looking forward to actually testing the amperage on the idle power, which I think a lot of people don't really sort of talk about. So I feel it would be nice to showcase the amp clamp meter that I actually got recently from AliExpress as well. So the first thing that I would like to disclose is that I did receive this inverter from AliExpress. So I will leave some affiliate links down below if you're interested in having a look at this inverter and making a purchase yourself. Just keep in mind that you'll be supporting the channel if you would like to have a look at those affiliate links. And if you're interested in purchasing one of the inverters listed down below, you will be supporting the channel at no extra cost to you. The second thing that I would like to disclose is that I actually figured out something while I was researching about this 2000 watt system. So for a bit of context, just to explain why I was looking at a 2000 watt inverter, essentially I wanted to run all sorts of different power tools and garden equipment and you know cooking equipment like induction stoves even maybe have that possibility in the future to run like a dishwasher or even a washing machine so personally i was looking to get a 2000 watt system so that i would be able to have something in the future where i could be like oh i want to hook up this this and this and i've got a 2000 watt system that can handle it however when i researched about 2000 watt inverters i then found out that it is recommended to have a 200 amp BMS. So what is that? So inside of these batteries, if you've got one of these batteries, I highly recommend that for this whole system to work, you will need to have a 12 volt battery for with a 12 volt inverter. So the one I will be demonstrating in this video is the one I currently have, which is a battery from Red Odeo. They make fantastic quality products. I will leave affiliate links down below with them. And in the future, I'm hoping to connect up this Red Odeo battery and we're gonna be testing it out with another battery from a company called Lightime. And we're gonna be connecting up two batteries together, which will allow me to run the system in a theoretical 200 amp, which will allow me to, to share the load whenever I'm running something at 2000 watts, I would be able to share the load by using the two batteries in parallel. So essentially it would double the capacity of what the BMS can handle because you connect the batteries together and it kind of creates a 200 amp battery. It is recommended to connect up a 200 amp hour battery or two 100 amp hour batteries together in parallel. Now, again, if you're talking about series ba battery connections and other voltages, that's a whole different topic. So now that we've got those two things out of the way that I wanted to mention, we can now have a look at the various different features, testing out the inverter with some different household appliances. And I will be testing the battery and the inverter within safe limits with my system. And definitely stay subscribed as in the future we'll be able to test the system on a larger scale. Yeah, hi, this is Future Joe here. We received the other battery sooner than I was expecting. This allowed me to actually test out. So when I actually finished this whole video, I actually uploaded it and everything. I then thought to myself, well, actually it would be really valuable to include a few tests where I was able to run this battery also in parallel with my other one to, to actually test out this inverter up to the 2000 watts that it can offer. Watch through this video till the end and you'll find a point where I interject and I'll discuss about how my tests went when I was running this system with two batteries in parallel at 2000 watts. So let's just jump into the unboxing very briefly and then we'll talk about the features that I like about this inverter. The unboxing was really nothing fancy, it was really simple. I just basically took the unit out. This is the updated model by the way. This is, they actually did a revised version with this one. So this is the newer model, I believe. So possibly the idle power could have changed on this unit. I've heard something about that, 
but I still found that in my testing, it was it was in still incredibly low number. So I, I'm not really worried about that at all. In the box, you get the inverter itself, which is nicely packaged. It's in a sleeve, which then you also have the cables and you also have the remote. I think the remote's a really cool thing I'd like to talk to you about. And you also get a very, very basic instruction manual. Doesn't show much more than just like some basic things about the display. And that's about it. So it's just a piece of paper showing roughly how the unit works. And then roughly on the other other side, you then have some different parameters on the conversion rates, how efficient it is, and the various different uh, peak wattages that it can take out and stuff like that. So now that we've got the unboxing out of the way, I basically hooked this up to my 12 volt battery and I was going to use this within safe ranges, right? So I'm going to use it around, let's say, 1000 watts to around about 1400 max for now. I tested that through my induction stove, which worked really well. When I was running my induction stove, I put some water and I heated it up. I just left the water to boil. And then I was hooking that up through my system because I've now got the AC plugs outside of my cabin. So I can now use various different garden equipment and stuff like that outside on, on the property, which is great. So I hooked up various different appliances. And when I was running the inverter with my induction stove, the induction stove was pulling 1,450 watts from the inverter. And then on my clamp meter, I was reading 136 amps going through the cable. So the amp meter is really handy. I highly recommend getting one of these. You can get these on AliExpress for like 25 bucks now, which is like crazy. Plus it doubles as a voltage meter for testing your batteries, which is really cool. And it also has other features on it. I also wanted to test the idle power. So when I was testing, I was getting something between like 1.6 amps going through the cable all the way up to about 1.8, 1.9 max. So if you do some math, that's about like 25, 26 watts because you basically take the voltage of the battery and then you times the amps and then you'll get how much the idle power of the inverter is actually taking. Even if it goes up to 30 watts, yes, that's quite high, but it's not that bad. Like as long as you've got power coming in through your panels, Hello again, Future Joe here again. So during my testing where I was able to test out this inverter up to the full 2000 watts that it can offer, I basically took the two batteries together. So I took a light time battery and I put it together with my Red Odeo battery and that allowed me to have 200 amps to play with. Whenever I'm asking for, let's say, above 160 amps to about but 200 amps because my system is a 12 volt system the batteries will work together to share that load so the first test i tried running was a 2000 watt heater i ran that for about eight minutes on the system it worked once the heater got up to heat it would start to reduce the amount of wattage to, to use i decided to run another test as i was setting up that other test i was running two heaters at 1000 watts and as i was testing it out i accidentally went over the 2300 watt limit of this inverter which was actually a really good test to actually do so there is actually surge rating on this inverter it goes up to 4000 watts and basically, whenever you go over 2,300, the system should shut itself off to protect itself. So I got to 2,400 and then it just shut itself down. Actually, that's good that we tested the protection and it does actually work. And then during my second test, so I had a heater running at 1,000 watts and another heater running at 1,000 watts. And that was giving off 2,000 watts. And then it would dip down to about 1,900, 1,800. It kind of was fluctuating a little bit. Um, but during seven minutes of running two heaters at 1,000 watts, it was running fine. You can see on the amp meter that I was getting between 160 at the beginning to about 200 amps going through the cables. I then let the system cool down for about, I think it was about an hour, and I let the systems charge with the sun because I was getting loads of sun all the way up to about 275 watts and 22 amps coming in. The inverter, the, the box itself stays incredibly cool during testing, which was really interesting. Obviously, the cables then cooled down once I turned everything off. And then I ran another test where I took my, my induction stove. I ran the induction stove at the maximum setting, which was basically 2000 watts. Interestingly, this induction stove, I've noticed with a lot of induction stoves, they, they get their wattage slightly incorrect. So for some reason, it says 2200 on the 
on the induction stove, but actually it was using 2000. Not sure why there's a discrepancy there, but for some reason that's what happens. I have another induction stove where it has does basically the same thing. And I just filled up a pot of water and I let it come up to boil. It was more of a consistency. I ran the induction stove at around 2000 watts for about 10 minutes. And then I turned off the system and it does work. So that's really good to know. Just keep an eye on the voltage of your batteries because when you're when the system's under load, your voltage will drop quite quite a bit. And then when you turn off the inverter, then the voltage will come back up to normal levels. I thought it'd be important to mention in case anybody's interested, you can also skip the whole AC system. And if you want to run a DC system, I made a full video explaining a DC controller box that I got from Licity. I'll leave a link down below in the description or in the iCard. Anyway, let's continue with the AC inverter. Often I have the habit of turning my AC off when I'm not using it. If you're wanting to leave your AC inverter on, keep in mind that the idle power will be running in the background. Personally, I just turn it off. Now that's why the remote is really, really handy. You might think of it as a gimmick, but actually it's really handy that it's wireless and it's a remote. You can actually just turn on the inverter right from the uh, next to the plugs there. I think it's a really neat feature that you can use the remote. You also have two AC plugs on this, which go up to 230 volts. I believe it goes up to 230 volts or 220. It ranges around that. That's the standard you have in, in Europe. Over in other countries like the United States, it'll be the 110 volt version, I believe. You can pick up one of these inverters for like 138 US dollars right now, which is incredibly cheap. It's definitely worth seeing if this works for you. I also tried running some other different garden equipment. I ran a strimmer through it and it worked really well. Surprisingly, the strimmer is rated up to a thousand watts, but it was only using something like, I got like 650 max, which is really low, uh, which is great. So I got 650 watts max going through the inverter. And then when I was running the electric saw blade, that was also not drawing a lot of power either. That was like maybe about 600 max and it was ranging from three to 500 watts, which is fantastic. I'm, I'm happy that it actually does the job and doesn't consume a lot of power. I'm also running a pump from this uh, AC uh, inverter. So it's nice that it's got two plugs on it. So I got one plug that I use for inside my cabin and then the other plug I'm using for the outside of my cabin, which has a switch on it. So I can kind of use inside or outside if I need to. And then the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is the display. The display tells you everything that's happening, like the battery's health, which is usually kind of a rough estimate, really. You can also read the voltage which is going through and then obviously the voltage will drop when you drawing power out of the battery, which makes sense. You've got the USBs on the top. I think that's a really neat feature. So I think it's really handy having the DC power still going through the system on the USB ports, but then the AC is off. So that's really handy. That's very efficient. And it means that you can still charge your phone, you can charge and run lights and stuff like that. I think it's great that it also has a grounding pin. So you can also ground the system if you would like to. And also this unit is rated as a pure sine wave inverter. So that also allows you to protect your devices that are sensitive to the modified sine wave, which is a different sine wave. Also, this unit has a bunch of different protection systems on it. It's got over voltage protection, low voltage protection, high temperature protection, overload. It's also got short circuit protection. It's got all sorts of different protections in it. And I've seen lots of in-depth videos, like it actually does have a lot of the protections that do work, which is really good to see. From my first initial impressions, it seems to be a fantastic thing for the money. Only time will tell so definitely stay subscribed for long-term review later on on this unit uh, and and if anybody's interested in that obviously but i'll make a full review later on uh, as as i spend time learning the unit definitely have a look at the future video where we'll be looking at these two different light time batteries where we've got a 12 volt 100 amp hour mini battery i'd like to have a look at and then we'll be comparing it to the group 31 size battery which is the standard one hopefully you found this video helpful and i hope to see See you in a future video.